Hi there, everybody. Welcome to Trans the M Friendly Friday. Today I have with me Sora Blackheart. We're going to be talking about a lot of really awesome things. How are you doing today, Sora? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing very well, very well. Um, it's a lovely, lovely Friday morning for me. Is it um, Friday? Yeah. It's, well, no. Right now oh my it's God, not. It's Friday. No, but today it's Friday. it's Friday. Yeah. No, it's Friday. Oh, is it? Oh, it's past it's Friday midnight? for a half hour. Oh. Well, a little bit longer. But that's okay. Anyway, um, how are you? Do you want to introduce yourself? Say a little bit about uh, what you're into and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, my name is Sora. I stream on Twitch at Sora underscore Blackheart. I play a lot of Dead by Daylight, Souls games, variety. Um, I talk a lot about trans things like trans politics, specifically how angry I am because I'm just some dumb gamer girl that can't actually do anything about it. But I do use my platform to talk about it and hopefully I will be segueing into a charity stream at some point soon that I am trying to put together with a couple people in Discord. But nice. that's to be seen. Um, besides cool. that, I'm on Twitter at um, Blackheart Sora. I just shit post a lot <laughs> i love it i love it very much <clears throat> sorry um yeah so very good very good um i like shit posting on twitter um i my favorite pastime i very quickly delete my shit post though i get really embarrassed because i'll get like i'll get like just a tiny tiny little bit of pushback from people mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be like, oh, shit, I'll overreact and I'll just delete everything and be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. so I can't do it too well. But uh, gotta, more power you to you. Huge, huge dick to shit post. That's right. That's right. Twitter. You sure do. You sure do have to have God a, gives uh, her biggest dicks to her hottest women. I know, right? Like are, are you already demonetized now or are you even monetized? I'm not monetized yet. No. Oh, OK. So I can say dicks all I want. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. <laughs> I'm not going to stop Fuck you. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Fucking YouTube. <laughs> well, um, so I usually like to talk about uh, like three things here on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to talk about. Uh, sorry, one second. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I usually like to talk about your experience being trans. Um, and then I like to talk about any interests or hobbies or anything you might be working on. Um, okay. and then whatever you want to talk about after that. So, um, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about, um, your experience coming out as trans and being a trans person and what that means to you. God, where do I start? Um, I almost spilled my plate of tots. <laughs> um, fuck. I I guess I could start with my like experience being trans. Mm -hmm. It's it's been a it's been a ride. I can tell you that much. I I live in Southern California. I I'm from Orange County. I'm not going to dox myself, but I'm in a more affluent area. I would say. Um, there's a lot of money here, mm -hmm. and I think that lead that kind of leans really hard into my experience I've had like outside of my house, obviously, because mm -hmm. like indoors, nobody's gonna try to kill me unless they want to break in. And it's like, right? <laughs> I mean, that hasn't happened yet, so That's I don't good. think it's going to. I don't see it in the foreseeable future. I don't live in a dangerous area, like I'm saying. So, my experience is very skewed. Um, I haven't been hate crime by anyone. I haven't even been misgendered. Ever. In fact, actually, it's kind of funny because be before I even came out as trans, I was getting misgendered. <laughs> and now I'm not getting misgendered. It's like they saw something that I didn't for years on end. Let's, uh, um, I want to put a pin in that. We'll come back to that a little bit oh, later. Okay. I've got a story to tell you, but okay, we'll go on. 
Um, but as far as what I see on the internet, because I've definitely dived more into, um, especially trans Twitter, mm -hmm. um, reading other people's experiences, um, it's definitely my experience is not the same as other people's. In fact, most people are having a lot of hostility towards them. And um, the only really like outward space that I was a part of before all this um, mm -hmm. was gaming and streaming. Right. Um, like, you know, I said before, I have a Twitch channel. Mm -hmm. um, before I came out, well, okay, so like, there's a whole process to me coming out. I, I identified non-binary for like a good four or five months before mm -hmm. I actually was just like, no, I'm fucking trans. <laughs> um, I started losing people like on Twitch that like would come around would be like mm -hmm. regulars, you know, um, and I'd see often and I would get rates from and I would chat with and it ended up at a point where I stopped seeing those people like ever. They're just gone. Um, I stagnated on Twitch like between that period and then like actually coming out last year, like fully after being on hormones for like four months mm -hmm. on like 420. Um, that's when I came out to my community and most people kind of already figured out what was going on besides what the, the ones that I told. Um, and for every follower I'd gain, I feel like I would lose too. Um, and it was like literally, I would see them in my chat, names I knew. And I would lose a follower and that person would disappear. And it got to a point where I was actually like, kind of curious, like, what kind of detective work can I do on this? And I clicked their name when they came into chat, followed. And then a couple minutes later, um, without them saying anything, I click their name again and it wouldn't say they're followed anymore, which is a feature on Twitch. You know, it says when people are followed to you. And it also doesn't say when they're followed to you, which if they're in your chat, you can tell if they just unfollowed because it doesn't say they follow you anymore. And that was a lot of fucking people. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, that sucked. Um, and then gaming and like Counter Strike is just like, there's <laughs> like there's like a good portion of like CS:GO players that are like super based, especially because like I know mm -hmm. how to fucking play the game, and like they don't care, they just want to play the fucking game. And then right. like there's other people that will literally like round one pistol round like okay where do you guys want to go um let's go ramp or let's go b or like whatever i open my mouth i i use my voice one time and it's like whole fucking team flips and like they will literally throw the game just to talk shit yeah because i'm trans most of the time they're eggs most of the time they're trying to crack themselves and they're using misogyny as, as a way. Happens more but than I think. Yeah. That's emotional labor that I'm not responsible for. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Know. So yeah. I just want to play Counter Strike. <laughs> well, yeah, my um my good friend Tori, who I um I love and adore very much. Um she was one of Actually, it was after I had my interview with her here that I started to get to know more and more trans people. Um, so I really like attribute a lot of that to her. I'm really thankful um, for her introducing me to a lot of her friends. But um, she's a big Counter-Strike player and she has a lot of the same experiences. Um, she just she's really good at the game and just wants to play the game and be good at it with a team that. Oh, wait, you know, Tori from Twitter. Yeah. I know her. Yeah. Oh, I should head her up. We should play Counter Strike. Yeah, do it, dude. Yeah. I, I, my rank decayed like before I started playing again. So mm -hmm. like I'm in Silver Hell, which is actually really fun because I could just like fucking do whatever I fucking want. <laughs> <laughs> I can literally, if I want to run train, I can. If I want to play like a dumbass, I can because nobody's gonna get mad. 
especially because I'm a girl. Who fucking cares? Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it'd be cool to play, it should be cool to play more with more uh more trans girls. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really cool. But yeah, no, uh your experience, what you were talking about really reminded me of um her experience and some of her struggles. Like I watch her stream sometimes. She streams it. And oh, um fucking cool. Yeah, she's really good. <sighs> I gotta follow um, her. But um no, she's really, really cool. I think you'd get along really well. Hell yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so so what other part of that did you want to hear um hmm because it's a multifaceted question did you yeah want to hear what was it out? like for you like um finding out how 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 was that experience for you how did you discover that like how did i like discover i was trans mm -hmm. yeah <coughs> So it's not just one moment, even though there was mm -hmm. an aha moment, like the, oh shit, I'm fucking trans. Like <clears throat> this isn't just like an amalgamation of something that like I fantasize and romanticize and like honest and like a little bit of fetishize, but it was like, there was an aha moment. Mm -hmm. Like, so, but that aha moment doesn't really come without a history of like wondering and thinking and right. wishing and a lot of yearning. So I guess I should really start there. Yeah. Um. So, <sighs> armchair psychologist time. Let me let me, <laughs> let me lay back, Mister Freud. Um, Miss Freud. My bad. Okay. Why did I? I was making a joke and yes, the fucking doctor, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so back when I was a child, <laughs> just a little kindler. Um, I don't know. I don't know how the thought came about. I think I was looking in the mirror at one time. I was looking in the mirror one time. And I was just, I was looking at my face and I was looking, I must have been like five or six, you know, I was a little fucking little kid, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like just then like forming my identity, like forming who I am, forming mm -hmm. like how I'm to interact in this world. And it's just like, at that point, you know what your genitals are. Right. Um. You don't know what that means yet, obviously, because there's sure. no information besides, like, I exist, and that does as well. Yeah. Um, but I guess I was looking at myself in the mirror, and, like, I was thinking to myself, what if, you know, like, what if I hadn't been born, like, a boy, you know? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna use that for technical terms. I was never a boy, for all intents and purposes. Um, I don't know. Like that ended up segueing into me going to my mom's dresser and grabbing clothes that I'd seen her wear mm -hmm. that I liked. Um, and like, I don't know. It was funny because the outfit that I put together, she'd never fucking worn, and it looked way better than anything she'd ever <laughs> fucking worn. Which is, you know, thinking back on that, like that first moment, that was the first fucking moment, yeah, where I was just like, this is not a male body mm -hmm. at all, you know. Um, it kind of it kind of rolled on from there. That was like the start of it. Um, I think I think like another huge fucking part of it was the fact that um, my dad was a fucking pig. Um, he's a complete piece of shit. Like yeah. any part of the story is is gonna gonna have that as the subtext. Um, he left his porn kind of just out there. Uh, I 
I don't remember what age I found that around, like eight or nine. Goodness. Um, it was in his bathroom, um, behind like a little like. I guess I guess in a lot of people's bathrooms they have like magazine racks or mm-hmm. like whatever. It was like one of those things. And it was like behind that though, because he had like all these golfing magazines and shit mm-hmm. to like cover it up, you know? And then it was behind that under a towel. It was just like you are not slick, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um so like he didn't have any trans porn, but like seeing women sexualized from a very, very young age. Um, and seeing like the naked form and comparing myself to that and just like actually like wishing I was that and knowing that from a really young age and like looking at the porn and not being fucking turned on by it. Yeah. But literally like knowing and like trying to cope with the fact that like eventually like I would not turn into that. You know, like, I mean, I know, I know porn stars have had a lot of plastic surgery. I know, like, all their tits are fine, <laughs> especially in those magazines. Like, I mean, not every porn star's tits are fake, but the right. ones that my dad was looking at were, yeah, they had some huge fucking fake knockers. I'm telling you what. <laughs> hey, he's got a type, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, which is funny because, you know, it wasn't my mom either. <laughs> Goodness. That's why they're that's one of the one reason why their marriage failed. Oh, um well, that's unfortunate. So like I don't know. That was that was dysphoria set in very young mm-hmm. at that point. Um so then moving on to puberty <clears throat> um and like knowing how everything was going to change and i didn't know anything about trans anything back then mm-hmm. like i didn't know about you know i didn't know about gender at all i didn't know how dna worked i didn't know how chromosomes worked all i knew is the shit they teach you in biology so i'm 30 years old i was born in 1990 if that gives anybody a frame of reference for the kind of biology they taught me you know Mm -hmm. none of this shit was like a part of anything right um so while i was hitting puberty the internet was kind of like coming up Mm -hmm. um so around 14 15 um this is 2004 2005 Mm -hmm. like Craigslist existed. Um, And if that didn't exist, uh, 4chan existed by then. And I was on 4chan. Mm -hmm. And um, there was also a section of Craigslist for back then, excuse my language, they were calling, trans people were calling themselves (laughs) she-males. Trans women. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, trans femmes were calling themselves she males because that was the um that was the term that like everybody got at the time. Yeah. I'm so glad we've moved past that. It's I'm so, so glad. Cringe. It's so cringe. <sighs> but like so I was seeing that not only on like because I, I found out about I don't know how the fuck I found about Craigslist. Mm-hmm. I think I just heard it at one point and then went on there and then like found out that was part of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it still said T for T though. It was funny, but like every single ad said like either transsexual or female. (laughs) Oh yeah. Like transgender was not a word anybody used at the time. Right. Um, And I was on 4chan looking at like, you know, um, fan porn, like Futanari shit and like Mm -hmm. uh, gender blended uh anime characters it's just funny because like i actually made a post on twitter about it earlier like when i was a young i was i was a young girl i was already looking at shonen protagonists and imagining them as women <laughs> i was on 4chan looking at people's drawings of them as women yeah trans Shinji, <laughs> right mm-hmm. yeah. and like <clears throat> it was less of a fetish for me and mm-hmm. more of like how do i get there you know right. and then 
feeling the shame that like no normal people don't feel like that way you're totally normal gaslighting myself and then like you know shoveling it deeper and deeper and deeper until like i mean like it finally bubbled up um it bubbled up actually in every relationship i was in um oh. in from the beginning of or like not the beginning of puberty like i think i had my first girlfriend like my first like actual like not internet girlfriend you know uh -huh. right <laughs> i was like 16 okay 15 sure. 16 i think yeah. and then i mean i broke up with her but like Every single girl that I'd ever dated until I dated until I came out as trans mm -hmm. at one point told me that this is that was the first time that they'd ever been with a boy oh. that they ever felt like was actually a girl. Yeah. And that's like literally just the epitome of how little any of us understood about what the fuck trans was. Yeah. You know, or or what it meant, you know. Right. Yeah. So fast forward years of therapy um and some tms transcranial magnetic stimulation i did that it was it, it was for my um depression and anxiety um mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> that was about 2015 ish mm -hmm. um i broke up with this other girl after that that like i was kind of living with before my parents divorced and i moved back home this childhood home again yeah um and i got into streaming and like you know still thinking i'm a cis dude mm -hmm. just like going about my business pandemic hits ah. and all of a sudden like i was already terminally online at this point mm -hmm. But I became even more terminally online somehow. And I just like, I think it was because there were so many other people that weren't like anywhere else. They were just online. It almost felt stifling. Yeah. And the harder time I had interacting with the more people that I was talking to, because there were so many of them, as a cis male, um, it became more and more painfully aware until like I started questioning my gender. I went through the entire period that I mentioned before of <clears throat> like being non-binary mm -hmm. and then December 2020. So I've been streaming for a while and I mentioned I played a lot of Dead by Daylight mm -hmm. and my favorite killer is actually Huntress in that game <clears throat> to go against, to play against, and to play as because um, mm -hmm. I play both sides. Um, and since a lot of the changes, I've actually become a killer main. And so she's my main killer that I play, nice. especially that I love to practice. Um, but Back when I was learning the game, like 2018 and stuff, there was this really gnarly streamer. And she would just systematically take my shit apart constantly. And this was like when she was like a lot lower, like smaller, mm -hmm. like 20, 30 viewers, and then goes up to 50, 70 viewers, you know, yeah. like looking apart in numbers. She's at like two and a half K every fucking night now. Every Damn. fucking night. And she's gnarly. She's crazy. Like, <laughs> so like, I had a crush on this chick too. Like, no and I'm way. sure that I'm not the only fucking person. Like, she's yeah. gorgeous. I had heard rumors of just you know people talking shit. It's like, oh, she has a dick. Oh, you know, like she's not really a girl. And I was just like, you're full of shit. So, December 25th, 2020, <laughs> this fucking streamer actually comes out as trans. And I was just like, damn. No. 
Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is for real. And it was just like, that was the aha moment. Mm -hmm. That was the like, I don't just have a fucking crush on this person. Yeah. I literally want to be this person. I envy how fucking good they are at the game that I want to play. Mm -hmm. I envy, you know, what they're doing. And it's like, I mean, I'm obviously not doing what I am out of envy. I don't do anything out of like some primal fucking like, you know, full metal alchemist sin character. <laughs> like I literally am who I am. But like seeing somebody else actually be what I wanted to be mm -hmm. and then me like not wanting to emulate that, but to be who I want to be. Mm -hmm. And be the person that I was meant to be. Yeah. And I fucking sobbed. I It broke me. Like, I didn't know what to fucking do. Like, it was the amalgamation of all of the things that had ever been wrong with me. And all of the reasons that I'd ever felt wrong and ever felt, like, displaced. And why I couldn't interact and why I didn't have friends. And why, like, people didn't stick around very long in my life. Right. And I always blame myself, but it's like, I didn't know it was that deep. It was because I wasn't who I was supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I realized I was trans. Wow. It took 30 years. Yeah. I feel you, sister. I'm right there with you. Literally I'm right there with you. Way. <laughs> I'm 31. <laughs> Yeah. I don't even look at like like I look at myself I'm like bitch you're not 31. Fuck you are 31. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I get that one too. Yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't look nearly as old as I am. Like 25 tops. Yeah. You tops. too. You look really young, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Estrogen does that, you know? Estrogen will make you look younger. And also yeah. A lot of people don't realize this, but like when you start to get rid of your facial hair, that does a lot. Like I, I actually, as a cis man, um, we can actually pull that pin out because this is a good segue. Um, mm -hmm. But you said earlier that when you were cis, you often got misgendered. Right. So people mm -hmm. would call you ma'am and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So like I have, uh, I guess I have a really like high pitched or soft customer service voice and I've done a lot of um, over the phone support for people. Mm -hmm. And so I have a really sweet phone voice. And when I was a cis man, often my customers would say, oh, thank you, ma'am. Like I would say my dead name and they would they would misinterpret it because they hear a feminine voice and they think I said something else, like a feminine version of whatever my name is, you know. And uh, yeah, that really stuck with me. I, I started to like actually grow out my beard and I had to like work on deepening my voice when I was talking to customers. I started to go by the full version of my name rather than the short version of my name because it was less likely to be interpreted as feminine. It was a struggle. I had to like really try to fit into the cis role. And when I realized that I was trans, I was just like, oh, fucking thank God. I could just like, ugh, don't have to <laughs> deal with God any of this I'm shit. I'm not a freak, and this is natural. <laughs> right? I, <laughs> oh, God. No, because, like, part of being femme is, like, it's a lot in the movement. Like, especially presenting femme or feeling yeah. it, at least for me. Um, and I would, I would want to naturally walk different. Yeah, I would naturally want to move different, grab things different, use my hands yes. different. Yeah. And like I had to teach myself to like not do that and not like emulate feminine. And then when I came out, it was like all of that kind of came down and I got rid of it because there was no fucking point for it anymore. <laughs> and it's just like now I get to feel all my natural movement is <laughs> it fucking should be. It feels really good, doesn't know. it? Mm -hmm. like I would I did all the same things like I 
the way that I like laid on my bed or laid on a couch or something and pulled my legs up to me or like the way that I find it more comfortable to sit cross-legged like more directly cross-legged rather than have like a bridge or whatever that men do oh yeah like look I'm sitting like this right now I've got like I've got a full fucking knee up like bent yeah. under me and another one like forward literally yeah. same like and I've always felt like I was really a lot more graceful um, when I was walking and like even if you like um, if you were to like watch me walk in the snow or whatever you would see my footprints more directly be like one in front of the other rather than um, like side to side you know mm-hmm. um, I don't know I've just always I, I feel you oh my god as as this interview goes on I feel like myself becoming more and more connected to you I'm like ah we are the same person. she gets me she gets it's me all, all, every trans girl's the hive mind like we're just the same person it's true it's true <laughs> that's why trans twitter gets along so well except the ones that get the brain worms but like oh, i think that's just bad hrt right <laughs> sometimes i will okay. say i will say it is very important if you're on hrt to be checking your hormone levels it is so very important Please check your hormone levels regularly. If you don't check your hormone levels, you don't know if your medication's working or not. So it's very, very important for you to check those. Please check your hormone levels. <laughs> it's not that hard. I mean, like, I met a girl that, or well, I know a girl. Like, we're still friends. Mm -hmm. Um, in her, in the beginning of her transition, she, uh, was so paranoid about her blood levels that she was getting tested like every week or every couple weeks. Yeah. You, know? you don't, you probably like, don't okay, have to do it that far, I'm but do that like, that was my attitude going into it. I was like, I'm going to be testing this shit all the time and all that <laughs> shit. I was like, I got to do all this research and find out the best way to do it. And like, I know we talked a little bit about this earlier, I think, but um when i started hrt i was like fine yes thank god i can finally start doing this and <coughs> it's okay for me to do this and so mm -hmm. i got really excited and so i like stayed on top of my regimen like i had alarms on my phone but most of the time i didn't need it because i was there like 10 minutes early ready to fucking take the thing and like i don't know i was really excited to be doing my doses and, and shit like that um now that i'm on injections i have to do it like once a week I don't know. It's easier to manage, but it's still exciting. Sometimes yeah, I like to true. do it day early. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I do injections too. Yeah. Um, but like, no, it's funny because like the way the HRT works and like the way that it like goes into her, just the effect that it has on our body now. Um. Mm -hmm. So when I started HRT, I was really, really worried about Spiro and like yeah. the side effect that I guess happens to happen in some girls where their breast tissue fuses to their breastplate and, you know, they don't get boobs. I was super wow. scared about that. Well, I mean, like, I don't even know if it's true, but like, who cares? It was scary. It was terrifying to hear. So I said that to them and they're like, yeah, we've heard that once or twice. Um, yeah, we can just start you out on uh, hormones and see how you handle it without a t-blocker yeah. um so it's like oh okay cool and uh yeah we've been fine i haven't been on a yeah. t-blocker for even a year like that shit just killed your tea my tea it was yeah. just like gone did you start so, on injections or did you start on yeah. pills nope started on injections oh all right yeah fair enough no yeah. i was i was ready like yeah. I'd already talked to like a few people and they're like, yeah, don't bother with pills. They don't really do anything. And like, I mean, I'm sure they do stuff. Like I'm, yeah. I've seen, I've seen plenty of girls that are on pills and they look great. Yeah. But I know Tori's injections on pills. are she looks 100 great. times more effective because oh, yeah. it's literally the hormone into your body, into your muscle, like, yeah. So, and you don't have to take it constantly. So that just kind of, means to me that like with pills you have to constantly be taking it which is hard on your liver you know and your yeah. stomach dissolving it like it may or may not affect you at one point but like any any pills like you take over time are going to affect you so honestly injections are actually just safer 
yeah. too. Most I don't know. People, like, I don't know. They'll I'm take not, the I'm not a doctor. Um, they'll take the the little um, pills and instead of swallowing them, they'll stick them under their tongue and let them dissolve and stuff. So, oh yeah, um, yeah. I guess that's like more. Um, it's a little bit easier in your liver, but mm -hmm. so the reason that people think that pills don't do anything is because with pills, yes, you do have to take them constantly. And I fear that a lot of people don't stay on top of their regimen as they should and will often skip doses and will see fluctuating levels a lot. And especially if you're not on a T blocker with pills, because pills alone aren't going to get your estrogen levels up to the point where it's going to naturally suppress your testosterone. Unless you have like a uh, orky. If you have an orky, then you're, I'm sure you're fine. But um, sorry, I don't mean to I ramble. don't. I wish I did. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just like every time orkies get brought up, I'm like, one day. Ah, one day. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm like, it's on the list. It's on the list. Balls but are temporary. Gaming is forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, at a point when you're when your levels are so suppressed, I mean, it's almost like they're not there. Except for I got these giant tanaki yeah, fucking tacones like jingle jangling around, <laughs> like I'm, you know, the fucking motherfucker that tolls the bell i got the bell <laughs> um, last fucking anyway i'm done making balls jokes <laughs> <laughs> not to be uh too inappropriate on youtube but um i did see a lot of uh shrinkage in that department really when i started um when i started hrt i uh wasn't able to fit into panties because mm -hmm. i was just splitting them one way or the other it was something was sticking out um <laughs> now it's not so much an issue they're very much tinier uh, my partner says that um she can definitely notice a difference so, i'm sorry it's this okay. is so fucking funny <laughs> something stick it out one way or the other <sighs> yeah well so i also uh I like it. I like that I can fit into these uh, these tiny tiny panties now. <clears throat> it lessens my already lessened dysphoria. God, I wish I had a fucking smaller dick. Yeah. That, it does not change anything in that department. Damn. And maybe that's the lack of T blocker. I don't know. Even don't though know. my T is like, I know my level is, my T is very under 50. It's oh, yeah. like probably around like 20. 24 28 it's something yeah. like that right now that oh, was geez. the last level and like i i don't think it could have gone up at all like they've been lowering my e dosage because mm -hmm. like my e has just been like way too fucking yeah high. let's not talk about Same. it um so they keep lowering it mm -hmm. but like you know no t blocker right that's gonna do whatever it's gonna be under 50 as long as it's under 50 you know, right. and my E is over 200. It'll be fine. Or 200, hovering around 200. That's where I want to be. Right. It's higher than that. I always <laughs> refer to these numbers without, like, the measurements. I realize mm -hmm. that, like, the proper <clears throat> way to do it is to use the, the measurements afterwards so people know what values you're talking about. Oh. Uh, but I can't ever remember they never what tell the, me that. like, really? Yeah, maybe I should ask. I mean, if There's you're, if you're measuring... That? Like, if your ideal is 200, it's probably NGDL or whatever. NGDL. It's probably the standard. So there's a couple okay. there's a couple different ways that you can get your um, your levels tested. And most um, most labs will use that same measurement. But some other labs use different measurements. <clears throat> my labs are coming up soon, actually. Did my last one right Why after Christmas. That should come in, like, the next couple of days, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, we get to compare labs. Oh, yeah. So estradiol is measured in PGML and testosterone is measured in NGDL. Um, I, I don't know what that means, but um, yeah. So mine's my estrogen is at my estradiol is at 390 and my testosterone is at 12. Yeah. 
Minus the three ninety. That's really high. Yeah, but the twelve. That's good. Yeah, the twelve is nice. I like the twelve. Yeah. So like, I mean, I'm not an endocrinologist, but it, it almost seems like, as far as like, I don't know. I see when I, when I talk to people about their levels and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it almost seems like the most drastic changes happen in the people whose levels happen to be <clears throat> higher than their target, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, I'm, I'm no expert in anything, but like, I don't know. I watch a lot of other trans. I'm watching a lot of other transitions, to mm-hmm. be fair. You know, I'm I'm on social media and we're all posting our transition on social media. I'm no different. Yeah. Um definitely talking to different people and where they are in their transition and where their uh, I've I I guess their blood levels are, it's just mm-hmm. it's either more or less effective, you know? Yeah. And that's just kind of like how medicine general works and I don't know. I can't really say anything other than like, I just hope everybody is like paying attention to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's important. Like, you know, all the transphobes always like say, Oh, you know, that's permanent, you know, like anything you do to your body. And it's just like, Oh uh, yeah, yeah I sure permanent. hope it is. I, I would love, I would love if it's permanent. I, <laughs> If it's permanent, I hope it fucking works. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, you know, get the effects. Because it is permanent. You know, you better get the effects. Or else, like, dysphoria is a killer. Yeah. That was one um, of the things that deterred me for a long time, actually. Mm-hmm. Was um, thinking, oh, well, you know, if I do grow boobs... And it turns out that I'm not trans. That's going to be a difficult conversation to have. Um, (laughs) But thankfully, I'm trans. So don't have to have that conversation. But it did deter me for a long time. Like the thought of possibly making a mistake or possibly not knowing myself well enough. You know? Mm -hmm. But... I would say that most of the effects of HRT you can reverse. There are there are a few that are irreversible, but But there's like you can even get surgery to remove your breast tissue, so it's not irreversible, you know. One in what every how many fucking trans people actually do transitions? Mm -hmm. Like It's it's even lower than like the fabled suicide rate, yeah. Which isn't actually even that high, like. Right. That's skewed. It's a it's a fucking skewed number, you it know. Is. Yeah. Like when they when they when they they analyze that and then when it's printed out, I feel like I have to say it just for tax, like because it's been brought up. Mm-hmm. It's based off of anybody that has like ever thought about or attempted, and that includes their pre-transition state or before they knew they were trans and they actually right. got gender affirming care. Like, mm-hmm. it is not a reflection of people that are happy trans people. That's right. So, like, the detransition rate is even lower than that. Yeah. Most people that get gender affirming care from what I've seen anyway are very fucking happy. Yeah. No matter what. Just because like besides the physiological changes like it's it's also it's also psychological. Mm-hmm. You know, um every every way that I feel about anything is completely fucking different. Like I mean, I think we were talking about empathy a little while ago yeah. and like just the way that I feel for other people and what they go through and like mm-hmm. how my interaction could affect anybody. It's just like I have so much extra thought going into it and it's just because of the hormone that I happen to be on. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a big change. It makes it you is. it makes you not 
the same as you were, you know? Yeah. That's a good thing. It really does. And I think it also enables you to be who you really are. I feel like some of that comes from the medication itself actually changing the way that your brain processes things. And I think another part of it comes from the feeling of relief that people get when they actually start transitioning and start living as their, you know, identity, as who they are, um, rather than repressing it. I think, um, yeah, both are really good and both contribute to a, a more healthy mindset. So, yeah. Like, I mean, even non binary people that don't seek HRT and they just want to, you know, be themselves. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever their identity is or, you know, because like I think we were talking earlier, like I really don't know much about xenogenders mm -hmm. or identification of it. So I'm just I'm I'm in the dark on that. But I'm happy for them. I'm fucking happy for them and, you know, their journey, whatever that means to them. Right. I think um, if you want to talk about it a little bit, um, mm -hmm. one of my friends, Gwen, um, they put it really well. Um, they, they said, if you look at the gender spectrum um, as if it's a rainbow, um, on one side you have like red, on the other side you have like violet, and in between you have a spectrum. And it's incredibly reductive to refer to that spectrum as colorful. And when you say non-binary, in some ways, you're referring to that spectrum as colorful. So a lot of people use um, metaphors to describe um, how they feel about their gender. And each one of those metaphors is basically like a hex code for one of the colors in the rainbow. Does that make a little bit of sense? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Are you still going? Or is that it? Well, no. I, that was pretty much Okay, no, because I was I was listening. I wasn't I wasn't oh, sure. Okay. Um <clears throat> I mean I wouldn't use non binary as a blanket. I yeah. literally no, sure, would sure. refer to as refer to non-binary people as non-binary NB, you know right um i mean but as much as i've seen on twitter like and and i i know several non-binary people like that is literally who they are like yeah. as much as i'm i'm a woman you know like i'm a trans woman but like you know right it's just like who we are no, certainly I don't mean to like be uh, dismissive of people who identify no. as non-binary. Of course, like I just, I don't know, like that. That's the only part I got on that. I think I, I think there's part of that I missed. That's why I was like kind of looking for like, is there more? Oh, because like I don't, I don't really. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I'll give you another example. Like, um, I'll give you a a, pers a more personal example. I myself identify with a xenogender, but I consider myself a binary trans woman. Um, okay. And for a lot of people, that those two ideas are in conflict. Um, but for me, I don't see it that way. Um, okay. For me, I go by she, her pronouns. I don't use any neo pronouns. Um, I've tried out it, it's once, and um, I don't know. I kind of liked it in some ways. And in other ways, it made me uncomfortable. So I just decided to stick with she, her. But um, I do use it. It's yeah. So in, in such a way, like I do identif identify as a xenogender, but much less of like a person in such a way that I see the the xenogender of myself. Which sure. Is why I like the it's, it's pronoun. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, I, I consider myself... Um, Tree gender. Okay. My trees behind me. Oh. Um, but um, makes sense. The green. Yeah, I um I like it because I like using the metaphor of a tree of being like a a strong sturdy foundation, um that provides a place of rest and comfort, um, for the people I love and care about, and um I like the idea of like my friends 
resting under my shade or having a picnic or something like that. Um, very cool. Like the idea that I, uh, trees could grow fruit and, and provide sustenance for folks as well. Um, I just really vibe with it. I vibe with the nature and everything. So I like it. Um, and so if you ask me, you know, what my pronouns are or if I'm a woman or whatever, yeah, that's, that's what I'll say is that I'm a, I'm a trans woman, she, her pronouns. That's pretty much it. If you want to get into like the details of how I consider like what kind of person I want to be and how I see myself, um, I'll explain tree gender to you and maybe you'll know a little bit more. That would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> what? I just like learning things. Yeah, I know, right? It's really show cool. People. I like um I like hearing the different xenogenders because it's um each one is a little bit unique and each one has their own reasons for their choice. And honestly, I don't I know we talked about this a little bit earlier. Trans rights are xenogender rights. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Making HRT accessible um, to everyone is something that benefits xenogender people. That's true. Absolutely. Um, but I don't. I don't really think that. Um, I don't think that being xenogender hurts anybody. I don't think anybody's hurt by that. I don't think there's a need to like pick on these people. You know, for the same reason there wasn't a real need for people on the internet to pick on furries. You know, like. Come on. And it's just sad when it comes from other people in our community too, you know, because it's like you're kind of the target of some of this stuff too. So you should know better than that. <laughs> what? Just, so just the, the furry hate. Because I remember when like furries became like I mentioned earlier, like being on 4chan in the early 2000s. Yeah. Just, I remember like furries getting the hate yeah. and like it all starting. And it was just like, <laughs> just, I don't know. It's like, it's so not funny for the furries, but this, but it, like, I don't know. Just thinking about the whole thing, like, cause furries really aren't that cringe. No. Like, there's nothing wrong with being a furry and like being in in the whole like cartoon animal thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, some really like fucking hot furry porn. And like, I'm not a furry. That some of that shit is fucking hot. I'll <laughs> tell you, there are um, my partner's a furry, and oh <clears throat> yeah, no, it's it's um. Really cool. I really like mm -hmm. the community. There's honestly, there's more like kind hearted people and good natured people than there are oh, yeah. like predators or anything like that. But there no, are going CSI to be like. The episode did them no service, yeah. but that's all Hollywood does to anyone. Yeah. Well, I mean, there were CSI episodes about transgender people too. And I mean, there was. Um... Oh, fuck. Now I gotta watch those. <laughs> There were um there were other things like there were there were always sunny episodes about transgender people that were not very Oh nice. yeah, I I've, like, I've watched those. Like honestly, the first episode of Always Sunny is just like, okay, so this is the Oedipus or like the opus of us just we suck. Like yeah. that whole show is just they suck. Well, that's the yeah, that's the commentary. You're not supposed to like want to be those people. Yeah. But as with everything, like there were people that wanted to be Walter White, okay? Like you're not supposed to want to be Walter White. Yeah, I mean, like the, at a certain point in that series, Walter White was actually pretty cool. But then, like yeah. all of a sudden, oh wow, he is not cool. <laughs> like he he went from pretty cool to very <laughs> not cool very fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, my point is that you always have to like watch out for those predators in any community that you're in, you know? Oh, absolutely. Um, but there are a lot of really good, really good people. And there are a lot of people in in those communities um, that have a lot of money and yeah. love to commission porn of their OCs. Oh, my God. So, so yeah. True There's story. There's a lot of really good stuff. Actually, one of my good friends was, well... One of the people that I used to be good friends with was a furry. 
mm-hmm. is a furry. I, I don't mean, I should say is, because mm-hmm. like, I don't know where he's at anymore. There sure. was an episode, there was a, there's a whole thing, there's a whole series of things that I'm going to get to. Anyway. Okay. Um, <clears throat> try not to dox myself here. Oh, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> So, if you need me to edit anything out, by the way, just mention. Oh, uh, I'm no. fine cutting stuff. Okay, totally. Um, so, this kid's rich. Like, his dad's got like I can't remember if it was was it a Ferrari or was it a Porsche? It was like a it was like one of those really old Porsches from like the Gran Turismo games. Mm-hmm. like that's like really expensive like the hundred thousand dollar up ones um so and like he would drive to my other friend's house and his dad's like i guess it was in 1911 i'm not fucking sure mm-hmm. i don't know cars i know souls games i don't know cars <laughs> um and at one point like we drove up the street at 100 miles an hour and in like three seconds this car was fucking fast and he could like literally 180 this fucking thing like Mm -hmm. at a dead stop because of I don't know fucking car and he didn't give a shit because his dad had money yeah um his dad like owned a business um was it a dealership did his ad don't a dealership it wasn't a dealership it was a factory (laughs) okay um yeah his dad owned a factory so like, that's even better than a dealership because you know, that's real money. That's means of production so, money. Yeah. Like, ah, uh, comrade. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zuka. Um, but no, he always had a fucking shit ton of money. Always had like, he wanted to be a DJ. So like he had like decks, he had like, the Apple computer at the time that everybody was fucking using and everything. Yeah. And I think it was on like his 21st birthday or something. He threw a party at his dad's factory and invited a bunch of fucking people. And like the next day we went to a rave in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, Damn. Yeah. And, and cause like he, he literally bought the ticket that night too. Like, I mean, I actually had to buy the ticket that night too, but it was just like, because it was a fuck it moment. It was like, it was, uh, his birthday was on Halloween. Oh. Yeah. So the next day was Day of the Dead. So that was a sure. fun show. Yeah. Um, cool guy. Awesome party. First time I ever did ketamine. Only time I ever did ketamine. <laughs> Shit scared the crap out of me because another one of my friends ended up in a K-hole. What's a K-hole? When you do too much fucking ketamine and you're almost going to die. Oh. Yeah, that's all I know about it. He almost like, I mean, he locked himself in the bathroom and he was like stuck in this fucking just like dissociative state while throwing up and wheezing. But he was locked in the bathroom and he didn't know anybody was trying to get in. Sounds lovely. Because he was fucked up on ketamine. Yeah. (laughs) But it's cool. He came with us the next day to the rave and we drank jungle juice in the car on the way there. (laughs) Um, From our furry friend who made the jungle juice. Sure. It it was a lot of tequila. Yeah. (laughs) It sounds like it. Oh my God. I broke up with my ex that day too while I was on on the way to a rave with my then girlfriend that I was about to start dating. What an eventful weekend, huh? Wow. <laughs> so, like, I mean, this guy had, you know, seen a pretty good time in my life. I have fond memories of the guy. So fast forward, like, a few years later, and he kind of, like, disappears off the face of the map. And, like, this honestly, this has nothing to do with him being a furry other than that he is a furry and it reminded me of him that oh, it was sure. brought up. Yeah. Um, he ran away from home. Because he was mm-hmm. living at home still. And he kind of went like, I don't, I don't know if he went train hopping or something. But like, he went off the deep end. Like, 
he was convinced that his dad had continually sexually assaulted him and been emotionally abusing and like gaslighting him for years on end that like things had happened that like didn't happen like his dad would steal items from him and like replace them and then like gaslight him that like he did it and he just didn't remember something like that was his story and like i'm i'm not sure if it's true or not because after th- all those episodes started happening, uh-huh. he when he ran away from home, he ended up um, inland, not really up north, but like inland towards like Nevada, Arizona area, sure. in the mountains. Um, still California, but like if you kept going, you would hit another state. Yeah. <clears throat> and he was like posting some batshit crazy stuff on Facebook and this is back when I was on Facebook I don't have a Facebook anymore Mm -hmm. if I do it's under a dead name (laughs) and I don't know that person anymore who the fuck is that right if you if you say hey is this your Facebook I'm not gonna admit to it yeah you can call me a liar all you want I'll call you a fucking psycho (laughs) um just because I'm not, it's not me anymore. It's not like any of the takes I wouldn't own. It's not like I'm not really any of the same person that I am now. I knew a lot right. less than I know now, but like, still, it's not me. Anyway, mm-hmm. he was getting into fights. He was in and out of the hospital. He was saying that people were out to get him, that the government was chasing him. Like, and this is a kid that was like, I mean, he had money, but it's like, doesn't matter you know he wasn't any kind of target he wasn't any kind of like political activist he wasn't like on literally anyone's radar yeah and he's just like facebook thread after thread after thread after thread of all these people are out to get him and Mm -hmm. like he's gotta he's gotta like go attack like some local police department or something and it was like i don't know at at a certain point we stopped hearing from because he did get arrested um yeah i don't think specifically for vagrancy but for being a public nuisance yeah and i think they transferred him around i don't really know what happened to the guy but that was a fucking episode that was crazy i hope he's good now I hope he's okay as well. But yeah, I'm <laughs> quite familiar with that um that narrative, that story. Um I know quite a few people who lost themselves to one drug or another. Yeah, I think he was on drugs. I think he was doing meth. I think he found meth and usually meth, yeah. Sadly. Yeah. And it's um it's sad every time it happens. Especially if you're really close to the person, um, because there's there's nothing you can do. You can't convince them. Yeah. No. Oh, he was really cool. I mean, he was really cool. Except like the next rave we went to, he was kind of a drag. But like yeah. that might have been the start of the end. Yeah. That makes sense. You no, know, I just didn't know about it. True. Sure. God, that's such a weird time. I was cis that entire fucking period. Yeah. What a waste. <sighs> I could have been so hot at those raves. Like, that's I, all I'm thinking about. Like, I, I could have been so fucking hot. Oh, my God. My party <gasps> days are behind me now. And I'm like, looking back, I could have been like this really mean? fucking smoking hot chick. What do you mean? You're still hot. <laughs> we should go partying. Yeah? I don't know. Like, when the, when the pandemic is done... When, when the panorama is when the, finished, or at when least the panorama's like, finished. I don't know. When when we get our next booster shot, we should like we should <laughs> go to a rave or something. Sure, let's do it. It'd be hot as fuck. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll get all dolled up and everything. Fuck yeah, I'll do your sure. makeup. All right, yeah, I'm down uh, for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I think now is a good time to go ahead and wrap up. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about while I have you here? No, I mean. Fuck. Um, no, I can't can't think of a thing. 
Okay. Is there some more you wanted to know about me? Well, I'll I'll get to know you a little bit better off stream. That's that's okay. Um, but yeah. Well, do you want to plug your stuff one last time before I close off here? Yeah, my name's Sora Blackheart. I am a Twitch streamer. It's Sora underscore Blackheart on Twitch TV. I play a lot of Dead by Daylight. I am a killer main usually. Sometimes I play Survivor. I spent about. 25, 2800 hours playing Survivor. And then I branched up into Killer, and now I'm a Huntress main. Um, I also play a lot of Souls games. I am a gamer by trade, but I am also a shit poster by night on Twitter at BlackheartSora. Thanks Very for good. having me. Yeah, of course. It was my pleasure. Um, well, thank you all for coming out and enjoying another episode of Trans in the M. Uh, if you would go ahead and hit that subscribe button, the like button, the bell icon, all that good, you know what to do. Um, thank you so much for coming out to the show and take care. Stay unique. Have a good one. Bye-bye.